Okay, very good morning. It's Tuesday the 12th of October. Hope you're doing well. And before I begin, I just wanted to mention this. This is the webpage for the Society of Technical Analysts in London. And today, tonight, in fact, 6.30 p.m., I'm going to be giving a lecture in person to the community at the STA and there is a live Zoom link as well. So I think the way it's going to be delivered is I'll be delivering to a lecture theatre, but there's going to be a Zoom video camera doing it for online as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the link. Feel free to register. Um, love to have you on board. There'll be a Q&A afterwards and basically I'm going to be talking about all things kind of macro fundamentals and how to apply that to short-term trading. So Check that out. Uh, as I said, free to join. And so if you're free tonight, love to have you with me. But otherwise, let's get straight into it and talk about what's going on in markets this morning. And relatively quiet overall. Uh, equities, we finished lower on Wall Street down around 7 tenths of 1% in the case of the S&P and the Dow. Pretty uniform closes, in fact. The Nasdaq was down a similar margin as well. Uh, and that led to a kind of negative handover to the Asia Pacific session. And consequently, this morning, the DAX is down about 150. Uh, and the Nasdaq future S&P toward the lower end of the range that was really seen in the early part of the APAC session. So as you can see here in terms of the S&P, just having a bit of a retest down at 43.21 and a half, which was that high seen just as APAC got underway. Uh, as we saw a bit of an extension, a continuation of the general downward trend that was seen through much of the US session yesterday. Similar setup in the NASDAQ. Um, in the currency market, the dollar just a touch weaker. Uh, the Dixie's trading down um, a little bit this morning, having just reverted back from around the highs that were seen in the overnight session. Um, otherwise, then um, lifting the major currency pairs, top left, euro, dollar, and cable. Um, pretty much flat at the moment, but were a little lower. Uh, overnight. And in the 10 year, we're up around eight and a half ticks. And in fact, the US 10 years, Europe just steps in, just breaking out of a bit of a consolidation range that we'd been trading um, through yesterday's session. And so, a couple of things then, starting off with the APAC news and the MSCI Asia PAC index actually snapped a, a three day climb. The technology sector was leading the losses overnight, but there's still a few things ongoing in that region. Uh, namely, further on the, the crackdown that's been happening from the state and the latest now reports suggest overnight that China is, in, is inspecting the nation's financial regulators, the biggest state-run banks, insurers and bad, uh, bad debt managers for the first time in about six years. Um, so that's the latest, uh, you know, further broadening the remit and that's made a little bit of, uh, of people apprehensive once again. Uh, and separately as well, the other thing is China Evergrande hasn't really gone away. It's just kind of fallen out of the spotlight a little bit, given the energy crisis that the globe has been facing at the moment. But the latest here is that China Evergrande missed overnight its third round of bond payments in three weeks. Uh, the Shanghai Stock Exchange data showed the top five losers among exchange traded bonds in morning deals were all issued by property firms. So still a lot of nervousness on that particular side of things. And so, yeah, getting things underway this morning, uh, you've got a little bit in terms of the equity fixed income mix uh, and gold, in fact, the kind of traditional more kind of risk off um, correlation at the moment. So equities trading a little heavy, fixed income gold seeing a moderate bid at the moment. As I said, the T notes up nine ticks, gold's up about six bucks um, at the moment. Um, otherwise, it is really quiet, actually, in fact, in terms of overnight news. There's not really too much for me to talk about. I didn't really want to start delving into stories that were inappropriate in terms of that aren't really going to move markets in the short term. Um, so there's still other interesting things about UK politics and what are they going to do to kind of bail out some of these energy firms to ensure that consumers don't get further squeezed by impending price hikes given the, the energy price surge at the moment. But otherwise, it's fairly quiet. And so one thing that I did see in the FT was that US COVID cases are down by 22%. Um, and actually, if you're just having a look at a couple of these graphics here from the latest COVID numbers, because often you don't really hear this get mentioned as much, certainly when the case rates are going down, because generally media has much more of a narrative to spin when case rates are going up. And since the end of the summer, 
um, in case rates in the US certainly have been declining at a fairly decent and, and healthy pace over the last two weeks. Um, the case rate down 22%, hospitalizations down about a fifth as well. So consequently, the pace of deaths has slowed, uh, which is a little bit of a laggard effect, of course, and as we've seen throughout the entire pandemic. But all kind of relative positive signs here. Um, and you know another reason why as well, as far as the uh, November timetable for tapering to commence, that this would seem appropriate in terms of further economic reopening. And so although a low ball print this time round last Friday, um, leisure and hospitality jobs with more in-person type service delivery uh, to, to recommence as we go further forward in time if these patterns are to continue going forward. However, one thing to be aware of is that it's a little bit fractured depending on where you are in the US. So actually the Northeast is seeing, is seeing more elevated cases against the South, which were some of the areas which were more hard hit during the late latter part of summer, they're actually seeing the most aggressive declines at the moment. Um, otherwise, straight into the calendar, and this morning you've already had a couple of UK data points, uh, nothing really too interesting to be quite frank. These were jobs uh, data numbers, so the unemployment rate in the UK was in line at 4.5%, and the average earnings exponent was in line at 6%. So if you're looking at the sterling chart this morning, there really hasn't been any move to speak of uh, of that greater interest. And in terms of any corporate earnings, uh, certainly UK and Europe doesn't really kick off for another week or two. And as far as US, the big banks don't really commence until Wednesday. They're going into the second half of the week. So what else have we got? So this morning, you've got the German ZEW numbers. Um, what are we expecting there? Well, economic sentiment for October uh, is expected to show investor morale fell for a fifth straight month holding at its lowest level since the pandemic fuel drop in March 2020 uh, and then we got jolts job openings just given uh, again the focus on the labor market uh, the kind of plentiful jobs at the moment and trying to diminish that that slack at the moment getting people back into the workforce no doubt that number will be closely followed as well in the afternoon session uh, but overall quite quiet I would say in terms of data so uh, we are welcoming the US back, obviously the bond market was closed yesterday and that does mean that we do have a bit of a concentrated fixed income auction process this afternoon and evening. You've got 58 billion in a three-year note auction at 4.30, 38 billion in a 10-year note auction. So two coming at you at 4.30 and 6 p.m. for any bond traders. You've also got UK and a Schatz auction coming out of the German Bundesbank this morning. From a speaker's perspective, uh, quite ECB focused. You've got ECB's not... Um, speaking at uh, 12.30, Lane, uh, who is the chief economist, speaking on the economic outlook um, at 1.30, ECB's Elderson at 2, and then you've got Fed voters, Clarida and Bostic, speaking at, at 4.15 and 5.30, so worth marking that down on your calendar uh, as well. But that is pretty much it. So a couple of other housekeeping things. Um, don't forget to... Register on the link below. Um, I'm speaking much more from a, a trading perspective uh, on applying macro fundamentals at the Society of Technical Analysts, Analysts tonight. Also, if you're in, if you're in America, um, we are actually, the, the team is doing a live simulation session with the University of UCLA in California um, later on today as well. So I'll drop some info about that as well if you're in that region, if you want to take part. All right, guys, that is it. So any questions at all, let me know. Otherwise, have yourself an excellent day ahead and I'll catch you tomorrow. Thanks very much.